There is a toxic brew in much of the air over India, sparked by everything from farmers burning their fields to industrial pollution. Special correspondent Fred DeSam Lazaro examined this problem just over two years ago, and now he has this update. Smoke billows from the fields of northern India as farmers burn remnants of their crops after harvest. They say it's the easiest and quickest way to get their fields ready for the next planting. But what's convenient for the farmers is wreaking havoc in nearby cities. The smoke from thousands of fields mixes with the pollution from millions of cars and trucks. Those noxious clouds of smog make it hard to see during the day and hard to breathe. Sakshi Chauhan is recovering from a severe throat infection. I was told by the doctor that I have an infection. Because of this, I cannot eat anything from outside. The doctor told me not to go out, told me not to go out because of smog. The smoke is so thick that earlier this week, flights at New Delhi's international airport were delayed or canceled due to poor visibility. The city declared a public health emergency, restricted the number of cars allowed on the road, and ordered all construction work to stop. The pollution has risen to great levels. Our company has halted construction since November 1st. We had it shut even before that. We're following the official order. We have stopped all work, and all the precautions and initiatives are being taken to curb pollution here. Also contributing to the rampant smog, plumes of smoke generated by fireworks during the recent festival of Diwali, a celebration of light where now, during the day, there is less. Weather and wind patterns are also blamed for trapping pollutants over India's capital. Duty fuels are the culprit from several sources. Automobiles are a major one. On average, 1,400 new vehicles are added to Delhi streets every day most now burning a highly polluting diesel long outlawed in Europe and the United States. By 2021, diesel fuel here will meet European standards. The government has also promised to shut down old coal-fired plants and restrict new ones. But pollution has been worsening for years. Two years ago, to get an idea of how dirty the air is, we went to one of the cleanest places in Delhi, the American Embassy School. It serves the children of American and other expats and diplomats. Many don face masks, but only until they're inside. Ellen Stern was the school's director. We have an air system that goes all the way through the school. We now have four different kinds of filters on it that filter out various kinds of things. Over here, so we'll open one panel over here and we'll see what it looks like. Barun Agarwal showed me the elaborate system his company, Breathe Easy, has set up in the school pulling out the first layer of filter, thickly coated with a grimy soot. So if you were to walk outside today, this is what is coming into your, absolutely, your lungs? Absolutely, yes. The fine particle filters also show stark before and after evidence of the harmful air outside. You would think such systems would be in strong demand, but Agarwal says, aside from a few buildings mostly occupied by expats, it's been a hard sell. Among India's growing middle class, he says, there's denial or indifference, a sense that pollution is the price of India's rapid economic growth. The number of myths that are there with regards to air pollution in India are incredible. The first, uh, the first one that I get by mostly Indians is that if I, if I breathe clean air for eight hours, then my immunity will come down and when I go out, I'll fall sick. Completely wrong, because this is if you believe that, then you should be giving your children two packets of cigarettes to smoke every day. Kamal Mittal is an environmental activist who also designed the embassy school's filtration system. It works well, he says, but it's no panacea for a city of 20 plus million residents. You cannot have just air purifiers and cleaning systems uh, for the people who can afford them. It has to be for the people who are on the road, who are in Jogi Jopris or slums. Mittal, who trained at MIT, has developed lower cost ways to cope with pollution. Plants, thousands of them in this rooftop greenhouse of his six-story office building. Clean air is produced and each floor is pulling in the air as needed. And there are plants on each floor also. This is a central air cleaning system for the whole building. 
Plants do more than produce oxygen, he says. They are natural air purifiers. Their roots eat bacteria and fungi, and they absorb chemicals like formaldehyde and benzene produced by office products. These are areca palms uh, for the daytime, bamboo palm. Installing plants is a small step people can take indoors, but he acknowledges there's a huge complex problem outside these clean air bubbles, not easily solved in India's chaotic democracy. The Indian government says it's taken steps to reduce pollution, but in the meantime, for years to come, India's capital, and for that matter, most of its major cities, will continue to be among the most difficult places on earth to breathe. For the PBS NewsHour, this is Fred Sam Lazaro in New Delhi. Fred's reporting is a partnership with the Undertold Stories Project at the University of St. Thomas in Minnesota.